There were many in command that thought the first two days were a tough, bloodied affair. This belief was challenged when confronted with the Axis defences of their airfield on day three, and as Charlie's squad entered the theatre of battle, they immediately took fire from an outpost across the valley floor. Charlie's squad was one of three squads ordered to capture an outpost on the left flank in the hope to set up a staging area for the main assault on the hangar, yet they became pinned down by sniper fire from their right. Taking cover behind an outcropping of rock midway up the slope, the squads Charlie and George fired back across the divide hoping to distract the enemy from the main British assault. However, due to the continuous enemy fire they couldn't get a clear line of sight and their attempts were ineffective. Reds told me that the Germans had a particularly good sniper who at a couple of points got the better of him. However, this sniper was eventually taken down by one of Reds' squad mates, much to his relief and that of the men around him. But at that stage of the battle, there's no point just lying around. You need to get up and get going again. With the Axis forces guarding the right flank, now fully engaged with the main British push, it freed Charlie's squad from combat to join squads Bravo and George to make a solid attempt at securing the outpost on the left flank. The Allied forces swarmed in to secure the position, but there was a strong resistance, and the fighting became all up close and personal. Gradually the British were able to overwhelm their opposition and secure the sector. As I understand it, the enemy was only metres away, and Reginald had to rely more upon his sidearm than usual. Not that he minded him. That, of course, that type of combat was what he relished in a battle. Sometimes you can become too detached from what combat is actually like when you're sniping from 300 metres away, and it was in this way Red would always try to remind himself of what his companions experienced out there on the battlefield. As the two initial points were secured, the Allied forces moved on to the central hangar, and with over half of their tanks destroyed from the day before, the British were only able to field a small armoured division on the last day of the operation. As such, they advanced two of their Churchill 4 tanks. These tanks were brought up to help break through the hangar, which had quickly become deadlocked as the Allies advanced stalled. From reading his journal, I believe there was one time that Sir Walt took charge of a tank's machine gun. Can you tell us about that? Well, uh, there isn't much to that part of the story, to be honest, as I understand it that the tank's gunner had been hit and they needed someone to man it. I don't think he liked it much as he swapped out quite quickly to take up a different position, but shortly after that, uh, though he was hit with a moral dilemma. As he was laying there hidden, he saw a German medic trying to resuscitate his fallen colleague, and well, he shot the medic. Now, I know that it wasn't something he was proud about doing, but with his comrades dying all around him, he knew that if that other soldier was to get up, that meant that more of his friends would continue to suffer, and well, you can't have that. Later on, he asked his major, did I do the right thing, sir? His major just nodded and said, yes, yes, you did, Rich. War is full of hard choices and very short times to think about them. The day was fast-paced and brutal. There was a moment that the Allied soldiers weren't looking down their sights, dodging bullets, or defending their companions. Charlie's squad had been ordered to secure the perimeter of the hangar and prevent enemy reinforcements from gaining access. As such, they moved up into the cover. However, they came under continued fire from the fortified positions on the cliff tops, to their left and to the front. With little option, they held their ground and tried to block any reinforcements from entering the main battle zone. The task was difficult, and many times the Allied troops lay wounded or dying upon the ground in a desperate attempt to make some headway. Gradually, the Allies were able to claim the hangar and clear their enemy, giving them a defensible central point from which to launch their next assault. I feel that this was one of the hardest parts of the battle. Reg told me once that there were wounded soldiers everywhere. He himself had been grazed a number of times. Blast marks scorched the ground, and he even saw one of his comrades on fire. But there was no time to check themselves, you see. Their orders were simple. Depress the enemy and take the next sector. For this, Sir Walt again held to the left flank and looked to use the supporting fire from their tanks to allow his squad to advance and capture the clifftop, which would give them the advantage of elevation to support their comrades fighting in the center. As the Allied forces inched forward, they found that their enemy became even more heavily entrenched and fire was coming from all around them. 
Again, the Allied advance stalled under the heavy resistance. As the days started to wane, Sir Reginald knew that something had to change, and it was his belief that leaders need to lead. So with other squads laying down cover fire to his left, Reg made a gallant charge toward the strategic point. <laughs> yes, well, needless to say, his charge ended up rather like the end of the day, a bloody disaster. Sir Walt had been shot in the chest and once again blacked out. He was fortunate that his squad mates were able to advance enough to grab his wounded body. In the end, he was sent back to Egypt for recovery before rejoining his squad to carry on with the war. As injuries mounted and as each strategic point became harder to take, the British resolve weakened and General Wavell gave the order to withdraw before his forces became encircled. Operation Battleaxe was a failure and General Wavell lost his command of the Western Desert Campaign in the wake of this defeat. Tobruk held out for 241 days and was eventually relieved during the following Operation Crusader. My father, Sir Reginald, believed in loyalty. Never be quick to give it. Give your loyalty to those who deserve it and those that give it back. Everyone else you can just nod and smile to. It was that loyalty that made his squadmates risk their lives for each other in what was a futile operation. And this was how he lived his life 